Hello, welcome back. And in this next mini video, we are going to be answering the questions, why are cells so small? So in order to illustrate the answer to this question, I have drawn three cells. And in this bad illustration, these are three cubes of different dimensions. So here is a one millimeter cube. So it's one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter length, width, depth, etc. Okay, here's a two millimeter cube. And here is a much bigger cube of 10 millimeter dimensions. Note that this is not to scale, okay? So the short answer to this question, why are cells so small, is because answer the problem of the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, and so the short answer to this question is that as the larger cells get, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. And conversely, the smaller the cells are, the larger the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what that means momentarily. But let's take a look at this first mathematically, all right? So how do you determine the surface area of a cube? Well, it's given by a pretty simple mathematical equation, which I'm sure you've learned about in geometry or in high school algebra. Maybe you haven't seen this in a long time, so let's refresh your memories, okay? So the surface area of a cube is length times width, okay? For just one face of the cube, but how many faces does a cube have? Six, right? So six times length times width, and for the one millimeter cube, that's a pretty simple equation. Six times one times one. And that gives us a cube with dimensions or with measurements of dimensions of six millimeters squared. Okay, because we're looking at the two dimensional surface area of all of these sides of the cube. Okay, so what is it for the two millimeter cube? Six times two times two, or in other words, six times two squared, that gives us what? Okay, so six times four equals 24 square millimeters. That's how many millimeters there are for the surface area for this entire cube, all right? Now for the much, much larger cube, it's six times 10 squared. That gives us a total surface area of what? 100 times six, 600 millimeters squared, okay? So we're not done with figuring out the surface area. Let's also figure out the volume. So the volume of a cube is given by the equation length times width times height, okay? So for the one millimeter cube, that's pretty easy. One times one times one equals, well, one, right? For the two millimeter cube, two times two times two, in other words, two to the third power is eight millimeters cubed. Okay, oops, let's fix this. One millimeter cubed. Okay, now for the large cube, 10 times 10 times 10, 10 cubed equals 1,000 millimeters cubed. Okay, so millimeter squared gives us surface area, two dimensions, for three dimensional, for three dimensional space, millimeters cubed. Okay, now the problem is going to refer back to the surface area to volume ratio of these cells of different sizes. So what is the surface area to volume ratio of the one millimeter cube? Six over one. For the two millimeter cube, 24 over eight, and that reduces to three to one, right? For the 10 millimeter cube, 600 over a thousand. Let's see, if we reduce that down, that's six over 10 or three over five. Okay, so now, this which one has the largest surface area to volume ratio? It's the smallest, right, at six to one. And as the cubes get larger, three to one, three over five, and even larger cubes, we get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller fractions of the surface area to volume ratio. All right, so 
that's all well and good as far as mathematically, but let's flip this around real quick. Whoops. I guess we can't flip this around. You guys can just look at me like that. So what does this mean for cells? All right. So imagine you're going to a party and you have to get ice. All right. So you know that a liter block of ice, okay, is comes in a liter bag, but you can also get a liter of chipped ice or shaved ice. All right. Now it's they're both equal a liter of that frozen water, that ice, right? But which one is going to melt faster? So in other words, which ice, the liter block of ice or the liter chopped ice, is going to melt faster? So to think about this physically, so let's see, if we can think about heat diffusing or permeating those ice, all right, that ice, either the block ice or the chipped ice, which ice is going to melt faster? Well, of course it's going to be the chipped ice, right? And that's because of the problem of the surface area to volume ratio. Those much, much, much smaller chips of ice, they're going to allow the heat to permeate them and diffuse into them much, much faster than that big block of ice. Okay, well, that's the ice example. But let's think about this in terms of cells. Okay, if a cell is trying to get nutrients from its environments, into which cells are you going to more easily diffuse those nutrients into the smaller cells, right? So that's why cells are so small. It's this problem of the surface area to volume ratio. The larger the cell is, the more difficult it is to diffuse nutrients and gases and whatnot into that cell where it needs to be. All right, until next time.